that's here in the gymnasium as well. Okay, we're good to go. All right. Well, again, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us this evening for the uh, this town hall meeting for the Penguin Lake. My name is Wade Matthews. I'm the public information officer for the Utah Division of Emergency Management, part of the uh, Department of Public Safety, who along with Utah Highway Patrol uh, and uh, uh, the Department of Natural Resources, Division of Water Rights, maybe there are some other state agencies who are, are here supporting your local officials in, in this response this week. Um, and this town hall this evening is being offered in order to bring all of the response partners together in one place who are coordinating, collaborating, and communicating to provide you, uh, the people who are involved right now, with all of the latest information that we have available. We know that when you have the, the information, you are then able to make informed decisions and when the time comes uh, to take further action if necessary. So we want to help, uh, help you be informed. Knowledge is power. Um, so tonight we will hear statements from Panguitch Mayor Kim Soper, Sheriff Eric Houston, who is the incident commander, Garfield County Commissioner David Tebbs, Utah Department of Public Safety Commissioner Jess Anderson, and Assistant State Engineer Everett Taylor from the Utah Department of Natural Resources. We also have some subject matter experts here that will be available for questions after those statements, including um, Alan Henry from West Penguin Irrigation Company, John Dodds, Garfield School District Superintendent, and myself regarding any preparedness type of questions may have from the Division of Emergency Management and, 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 and some others here as well. So we will ask you to hold your questions after the brief, uh, until after the brief statements from those individuals we identified at the beginning, and then we will take your questions. We also want to remind you now, and maybe again at the end if I remembered, that you can find all the latest information on the Garfield County website homepage, uh, garfield.utah.gov. We want to just have a one-stop shop where we're trying to collect and uh, present all the uh, information for you. As you're leaving, we're going to slide a, a table out here so you can get some additional handouts. We have um, some of the evacuation plans and some maps that we'll be talking about tonight. Those will be available in handout uh, for you, as well as uh, some other emergency preparedness information. So that will be on the, on the table as you're heading out the door. So with that, I will again introduce Mayor Kim Soper, City of, of Panguitch, to make his statement. Good evening, everyone, and, and welcome. Um, you know, two or three days ago, uh, we got we got notice that uh, we had a little leak up in at the Panguitch Lake Dam, and and uh, things have really started happening since then, and. And a lot of things happened, uh, you know, with with plans and emergency vac plans and all kinds of things are going on. And during that time, um, I got a lot of calls. I was inundated with calls. Well, what do we what do we need to do? Where do we need to go? What what's happening? And uh, so this morning we got talking about it in a, a briefing, a morning briefing, and and we knew we needed to have a, a public meeting. And so again. Welcome. I'm glad you're here. Um, hopefully, we can get your your uh, questions answered tonight. That you can see, there's a lot of a lot of folks here that uh, I know. If you have a question, it's going to get answered. And uh, um, you know, I, I was thinking back a few years ago. I think it was in what 2017. We we were in the same room with uh, the Brian Head fire. If you remember the Brian Head fire. Kind of the same thing that uh, we had a little emergency coming at us at Panguitch, and, and we got through that, and uh, and we're going to get through this um, with this uh, the ordeal with the with the lake, and and you know it's just it, it's just a different emergency. But uh, again, we're we've got a lot of good help. I might just say, you know, I I some of the phone calls I've been getting. Um, sorry, I just. Just the thought of it. I've had so many calls. 
of people wanting to help from, from local towns around us, from people here, uh, all kinds. You, you can't believe the people that have called the, the wanting to help thing the city and, and you as, as the citizens here. And uh, it's, it's, uh, it, it's just overwhelming to see some of this, all the support we've had. Um, just a few things, I'll be, I'll be short in, on, on my comments, but uh, a few things going on. You know, there's, um, Wade talked about, there's an evac plan and it's, it's over here. You can get it when we leave or it's on the website, Garfield County uh, website. You can go and get that evac. I'd grab it. It's going to answer some more of your questions on what to do. But, you know, one thing in there, it, it talks about um, if, if the flood, you know, if the, the, the dam happened to breach and we did get the water down here, there, there would be a, probably a lot more flooding. And not probably, there would be a lot more flooding on the west side of, of town. And uh, so they've, they've kind of made a, uh, a line there at Main Street that the folks on the west side of, of, of town would be, uh, probably evacuated, not probably, they would be evacuated. And so when that happened, uh, I got thinking, I live on the east side of town and uh, on Main Street. I thought, well, what, what would happen if, if, if they got evacuated? What would I do on the east side? Well, what you need to do are the people in, in all of the community need to be prepared. If, if that, for, for whatever reason, if, if that uh, area expanded, then you would be at, uh, you would be need to be prepared to to go ahead and and move when when asked to to go, and so I think it, it behooves all all of Pangs to be prepared, know what's in the plan, and, uh, uh, and and just take care of it. Another thing, you know, I know a lot of people in town, I, I, and I'm one of them. If if my neighbors are are getting flooded, I want to go help, but I would just I would just caution, don't do that. If right in the emergency let let the emergency folks take care of it and uh and then we'll pick up the pieces later so don't self-deploy don't go in and try to help if, if that happens stay home take care of your family and and do what what you need to do um and uh the, the other one other thing a couple other things i know i've had a lot of questions about sandbags we've had a lot of people call if you want sandbags and you're more than welcome to go get them and, and put them around your your uh, basement windows or wherever you want them, they're up the stake center, the LDS stake center. Uh, and if, if we run out, we'll get more. Uh, we can get truckloads of sandbags. So if you want them, you can go get them. Just go up and get them and, and uh, use them. That's what they're there for. So with that, and the last thing is uh, safety safety of, of, of you and everyone in the city. Um, you know, there's, we just, that's why we're here. We want everybody to, to be safe and if something happens. Um, but there's one thing that's going on and you, you're gonna hear from some other folks about how we're, we're they're taking care of the, the uh, uh, issue up at the dam. But one thing that they're doing is they're letting water out of the, the lake so they can they can take care of some of the pressure that's on the dam. And, and in order to do that, all that water's coming down and it's coming right through town. It's coming down Pangage Creek. And if you go at the creek right now, it is very high, really, really high. And uh, with the runoff that we've got. And so I would say, if you've got small children or anybody, please just stay away from Pangage Creek. Don't go over there. Um, there's just a lot of a lot of things that could happen there, and so be safe, and uh, and stay away from there. And and, and uh, uh, again, I really appreciate all of you being here. Um, one one thing I'd say, you know, there's probably a lot of people that aren't here. There's a lot of people on Zoom, but if you have neighbors that that aren't here and they have questions, hopefully help them out and uh, help them out with answer some of their questions that you'll you'll get some answers for tonight. And again, thank you for being here and, and I'll, I'll sit down and let somebody else. Go. Thanks for coming tonight. Um, I know it's been quite a stressful situation and I hope everybody's doing okay. Trust me, I know quite a bit about stress, I'm pretty sure. so. I'd like to thank everyone for the outpouring of help from around the state, our community, 
uh, especially Governor Cox, Commissioner Anderson in the state of Utah, um, all of the counties surrounding us, cities, everybody's wanted to come help. We have enough that we don't know where to put all of the help that we're getting. So, um, and currently we're in a holding pattern. So it, uh, it's good is we're in, I feel like we're in good shape. So our priorities have been life safety, property preservation and scene stabilization. Uh, we do not take it lightly putting you under this stress after the work at the dam today. I feel a lot better about the situation we're in. It looks a lot better than it did yesterday at four o'clock. I feel a lot better about where we're at. Um, I trust the plan they're implementing. It looks like it's working. Um, we're gonna continue to move forward with that. If it comes to an evacuation, we'll not only sound sirens, but we'll be going door to door and calling those that have signed up for our alert system. If you haven't signed up for our alert system, you can get on our website and sign up for that. I'd recommend you do that. That will be the quickest way to get that alert as we're putting them out. So if we do evacuate, both the second ward chapel and the high school will be shelters. The Red Cross has been notified and we will be working with them when you leave your house. Please put something green in your window to signify that you're out and the house is okay and you're safe. So. Uh, thank you for your support. It's been a stressful couple days, and I know it has for you. Uh, everybody in the community is trying to help as we can, but we don't know what to do with all of it. Um, anyway, thank you. With that, we'll turn some time over to Sergeant Cox for the evacuation plan, and, and uh, we'll move from there. So thank you. Thank you. Um, as he mentioned, I'm Sergeant Cox. I'm with the Utah Highway Patrol Station here in Panguitch. Um, we've been tasked to assist with the evacuation of Panguitch, both the schools, high school and the elementary school, in the event that there is a breach. Um, we can get our slides up. There's the handouts were also mentioned that there'll be these, these uh, slides that you'll see behind me um, are available as well. They're also on the websites previously mentioned, and I noticed that they're also on the Garfield County School District website as well. Ultimately, I'm going to address the elementary and the high school separately, and then as the whole town would evacuate. So first with the elementary school, ultimately we are making the uh, 100 South eastbound from 300 South a one-way street. So we'll filter around to 300 West and then to the 100 South in front of the elementary school through the pickup lane, just as it would have been had it been a regular school pickup day. Uh, every child that is attending the school at the elementary school, and again, when we get to the high school, will need to follow that. So if your child is walking, they're going to stay at the school. You will need to be picked up at the school through this uh, evacuation plan. Over to the high school, that 100 uh, South will continue as a one-way eastbound in front of the high school. Those students that are driver students, uh, through the permission of the uh, high school and parents, they will be permitted to drive themselves away from the school with their siblings only. As they travel eastbound, we're just asking that you, uh, for the flow of traffic one way, uh, to turn at the uh, intersection there at 400 east and 100 south and, and go north towards uh, Center Street. Um, from that point, you can return if you need to, to your homes to grab what you need um, and then continue the evacuation of the town. I would like to remind that this is something that we have time to do. This doesn't need to be a rushed, you know, if traffic's in front of me that I need to go around in the dirt. Uh, this can be orderly. If the notice is that the dam has broken or is breached, we have time. Uh, the estimation is roughly two hours before those floodwaters are really inundating the town of Penguin. So you can imagine we can get all of us out of this town uh, through an orderly fashion. So we ask that that be orderly to the two schools and then the other slide uh, that also shows kind of that, that flood zone that is likely to go to. We're just asking that people choose to go east, therefore southbound on Highway 89. Before the floodwaters reach Penguich, it would still be safe to proceed and go northbound out of, you know, out of Penguich on 89. But do so in an orderly manner. If those floodwaters have reached, as you know, 
the creek goes under Highway 89 and we're concerned with that bridge. So we would ask if it is delayed and you didn't get everything loaded up that you needed to in time to head south. Okay, you can get anywhere in the state of Utah heading south, just a little detour. Um, that is all I have for the evacuation plan. Um, my name is David Tebbs, Garfield County Commissioner. Um, part of my responsibilities as the County Commissioner are with emergency response. I'm involved on the Bryan Head fire and here I am a few years later dealing with something I, I would have never thought we'd be dealing with today, but on the Panguish Lake Dam issue. Um, and Sheriff, if you're asking for volunteers to go around and look for green signs, don't tell them my dad because he won't be able to tell if it's green or because he's colorblind. So. I looked up at my mom and she kind of chuckled because we knew what we were thinking. Don't don't have dad go look for those green signs, <laughs> which is scary when you pull up to a stoplight or a, a street light. You, know, you just don't know if he's gonna go or stop. So um, just a couple of things that we're doing from the county side. Um, first of all, we, we do have road crews on scenes, our own local road crew. They are placing some block behind the top two feet that we're concerned about right now to try to, at least if it moves, there's a little bit of support there. Um, we're asking them to be safe and they're, uh, it's quite a sight. And there may be some pictures of that with the excavator up placing stones behind the, the top part of the levee. Um, so we've committed our road crews to that. We did issue an emergency declaration today. If you have a chance to read that, don't panic. It makes it sound, you know, bad, but we're, hey, we're declaring an emergency, which that opens up funding sources from the state, federal government for these kind of situations. So that's a necessary step. Panguitch City has also issued a declaration um, in conjunction with the county so that that opens up venues. If we need them, we're ready to go at a minute's notice. It's been filed with the state and we're ready to go. That also gives us access to Red Cross and other emergency response groups that, that can come in and help. Um, also, the other communities have been very supportive. We've contacted the mayors of all the communities and uh, they're more than willing to help. If we need to evacuate to those communities, we also have facilities and resources that they have at their disposals. You know, if it's a overnight thing, we'll find you a blanket and find you somewhere to sleep if you come um, southeast uh, toward Bryce Canyon, Tropic, Cannonville, Henryville, Escalante. They're all ready to help and support wherever we can. Um, and also thank you to the local wards. They're currently this morning, they had their list. They're inventorying all the homes and occupants along with our uh, senior citizen uh, committee and council to try to inventory those people who may be the most at risk, who may need help with mobility. Our ambulance is ready to go. Um, all of our EMTs across the county will respond and uh, we'll be able to evacuate if we, if we need to, we're ready. Remember, you know, no plan's perfect, but um, our plan, if we're prepared, we don't need to fear. Sleep at night. Um, I, I told them earlier, I said, my biggest, Fear would be that I wouldn't wake up because I can't hear anything at night. But we will have people at your door if you're worried. Uh, the sheriff's office is ready to respond along with highway patrol and other emergency responders. Um, you'll know when it's time to move, if we need to move. So, you know, calm your fears. There will be help. We'll, we'll be there to help each other get through it. So I trust the plan. I, I, I believe that the officials that are called to, to take care of it and the engineers, they're doing the best they can. And we saw some improvements today. So, you know, I trust the plan that we're going forward with and, and I, I feel like you can too, and we're just doing our best. We represent you and our number is available on the website, both Commissioner Taylor, Commissioner Pollock, call us if you have any questions. And it's our cell phones, call us. We'll do our best to respond and we're here to, to support you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, good evening. Uh, my name is Jess Anderson. I serve as the commissioner of the Utah Department of Public Safety um, for, the, for the state of Utah and representing the governor's office tonight. 
Um, first of all, let me just tell you that Governor Cox sends his greatest concerns and, and admiration for this uh, community. Uh, unfortunately, he's not able to be here today, uh, tonight, or today uh, due to family situation he's having to deal with. But um, I can assure you that the state of Utah stands behind the efforts of what your community is going through. Uh, we have received those uh, disaster declarations, that both from the city and the county. That is significant in the fact that if there is an emergency, and if there's one that uh, to, uh, precipitates a, anything to do with the dam, that uh, we at the state level also have the ability to file a, a, a disaster emergency disaster, which basically opens up some sort of um, opportunity to go after federal dollars and some sort of assistance through some some uh, FEMA dollars. So that's significant. We've received that just so you are aware and we would work through that process should we need to go through that for the community. Um, our statewide uh, emergency operations center through our division of emergency management has been activated and is uh, being worked. What does that mean? That means that every single state entity uh, through the executive branch uh, plugs into that. So we've got all of a lot of those representatives, some of those representatives here with us tonight, but any resource that is needed to come up to the state level goes through a very um, easy process in which the EOC, the state EOC would turn around and we'd send those resources back to you. So if you run out of sandbags, we've got sandbags. We can, we can help with resources wherever you might need those, including uh, the road, UDOT, to um, um, uh, anything to do with uh, DNR and our resources. You'll hear from them here shortly, but uh, I mean, the, the list goes on and on. Um, and ultimately, just to let you know that you have our full support, the county, uh, the city, everything that uh, needs to move forward at this rate. I can tell you that um, having unfortunate experience of dealing with some of these things in the past, at the statewide level and throughout our state. Um, I couldn't be more uh, thrilled with the, the, the cooperation, the coordination of what we've seen just getting together today. And the fact of pulling off a town hall meeting just was simply announced this morning and to see the kind of turnout we have, uh, you have a community that is in very good hands mm -hmm. and that coordination uh, is going forward, which you sh should find great assurance of uh, the way that this is being executed and, and, and if there is anything to rise to the next level, you're going to be okay. So thank you for, for allowing us to be here with you tonight and, and coming together and showing great interest. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Everett Taylor. I am the assistant state engineer in the division of water rights over dam safety. And I appreciate the opportunity to be here tonight. Um, I acknowledge the concerns in the community and, and thank you all for being here. My hope tonight is to give you a brief summary of what's transpired at the dam and the efforts that are underway to protect uh, and prevent a failure uh, and flooding into your community. So we were first notified of an incident at the Penguich Lake Dam on Monday evening and worked in conjunction with the West Penguin Irrigation Company to begin releases from that reservoir and, and lower the reservoir level. In addition, we worked with the sheriff, sheriff's office to begin 24 seven monitoring of the dam. Engineers from our office uh, arrived on site Tuesday morning to monitor conditions and to provide technical support to emergency personnel and to the owner. And the owner's engineer arrived on site uh, last night. When all those key personnel were together, an uh, action plan was developed to mitigate what was happening at the dam. I do want to clarify that the affected area is the upper portion, uh, section of the upper wall of the dam, approximately 60 feet long, two to five feet tall. It varies along that 60 foot length was beginning to tilt or rotate toward the downstream, causing a concern for a, an uncontrolled release of a portion of the reservoir. As I said, an action plan was developed that had three components to it. 
The first component was to continue to release water through the low level outlet and draw the reservoir down. The way that was managed is in a ramping approach so that we could monitor downstream uh, channel capacity and infrastructure. We don't want to cause uh, flooding and damage to those things. And so we uh, have slowly ramped that outflow up. We're currently releasing approximately 258 cubic feet per second. And the second part of that, the second component of that plan was to relieve pressure being caused by the ice sheet on the surface of the reservoir pushing against the dam. And the way that was addressed this morning was using a, a ditch witch ditch cutter to cut through the ice. Four cuts were made across the reservoir approximately 80 feet, 85 feet upstream of the dam. And, and that really that released the ice pressure. The ice is pulled away now from the dam and, and taken that pushing force off of the upstream face of the dam. And the third component of our action plan was to stabilize the downstream portion of this wall that was rotating. And that was done by placing stabilizing material. I believe you can see that in some of our photos, the excavator placing that rock. That began from the east abutment of the dam, the east end of the dam, and has progressed out towards the center. We have accomplished, at the time I left the site, which was 3.30, we were two-thirds of the way across the affected area. We're going to continue to focus on those three things until uh, we have stabilized, brought the dam into a stable condition. That includes continuing to lower the reservoir over the next several days to a level that is below the affected area. So we don't have to worry about the wall tipping over and we don't have to worry about water continuing to come through that affected area. <clears throat> As I mentioned, we'll continue to focus on those moving forward. We want to get past this emergency situation, get the dam to a stable level. Then the next step for us is to address reservoir management through spring runoff so that we don't get into this emergency condition again. We'll work closely with the West Panguitch Irrigation Company to do that, as well as emergency personnel, other city, county, and state entities. And after we get through the runoff, then we will evaluate and assess the damage and what caused this and then and affect a permanent repair to the dam so that before spring runoff of next year, the dam is repaired and in a condition that it can handle that runoff without creating an emergency situation. I just want to add, I'm very encouraged with the progress that has been made today and, and I'm very uh, grateful to the coordination through all city, county, and state agencies as we've worked through this process and as we continue to work through that progress. Thank you. Yes, very appropriate. Thank you, gentlemen, each of you for those uh, excellent remarks. And, you know, they may have answered many of your pressing questions at this time. However, we will still have a microphone. Lieutenant uh, Roden from the Utah Highway Patrol will bring a microphone around at this time so everybody can hear you. We're able to take your questions from those gentlemen that just spoke, as well as I mentioned, um, Alan Henry from West Panguitch, Panguitch Irrigation Company, John Dodds uh, from the Garfield School District and myself from the Division of Emergency Management and any of the others that you see sitting here at the tables with us tonight. So we'll open it up to questions at this time. Go ahead and raise a hand, stand up, and we'll try and get a, or come down, maybe meet the microphone halfway if you want to, or, okay. Push that button and then the light. Yeah, if you don't mind stating your name while you're waiting, while we're getting that microphone going, if you don't mind stating your name along with your question. Thank you.
was there. And I noticed this morning in my first class in college, no back. Maybe I can talk to them. Said there was 48 inches of snow there, there was 20 inches of water on the top. Uh, one of the old timer, Alan Henry, thought that he was being there. He used to say that he took about one inch water clouds and he would go back and cast them out. Great one, damn one foot. My experience with looking for directly to the good and the good stuff here. My mind is for the human water and the good back and cast them out. Great water and the damn one. So, with that in mind, my question is. We uh, prepared for all this runoff to take place. It's uh, apparently about that in break in the water content is that high in the snow. It's maybe start to move. So, what I would suggest maybe with what's being released now, I hope that's stated quite quickly. But his comment would be maybe think about going into that valley of the next debater. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. We'll have Everett and Alan if you have if you want to address that as well. Thank you for that question. So as I mentioned, our, our focus these last few days has been on the emergency and addressing that as, as it is the urgency. Um, as we move past that, and I appreciate your comment about snowpack, we monitor that through the NRC, the Nash, National Conservation, yes, excuse me, National Na, Natural Resource Conservation Service. I knew I could get that acronym. So Natural Resource Conservation Service, the NRCS Snow Survey System. And we work closely with Jordan Clayton, who uh, manages that program. So as we move forward to manage this reservoir, We'll be working with him as, long, as well as with Len Merrill from the National Weather Service. He's one of their lead forecasters to determine what the, not only what the snowpack is, but what the predicted runoff will be into this reservoir. And then manage the outlet um, in conjunction with storage available in the reservoir to keep it below that critical level so we don't store water up against this affected area. And I'm just going to add, so last year with our record snowpack, this reservoir did spill. We've gone back and looked at the maximum flows in the river. They were around 220 cubic feet per second during that runoff and spilling. And we are currently, as I mentioned, releasing approximately 258 cubic feet per second. And so I feel like we really can manage this reservoir. It's, it's going to take some coordination, cooperation, and diligence, but that we can manage this reservoir through the spring runoff without creating another emergency situation. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Another question right there? Yes, okay. This is not go. very loud, but you're gonna have to talk. Uh, one question was asked, and it can be good for Sergeant Cox to share, uh, where the closures are on uh, 143, and uh, can people you know, uh, get through, whether it's manned or unmanned? Gotcha. So we're, we're gonna leave 143 closed until we feel it's safe. Um, we'll get it open as fast as we can. The North Shore Road, probably the both sides of the dam will remain closed while we're working on it. Um, I don't know how long that will take. And when the, the danger's mitigated, we'll open 143 back up. And I wish I'd give you a date, but whether it's seven, 10, you might try to hold me to it and I'm not sure when that's gonna be, so. No, the, the road is closed. There won't be an officer always there. Um, please don't go around it. It's closed for a reason, so. My question is, and I'll tell my, tell my white bridge and white box up there, how come we can't put a 
dam up there to stop those water from coming in and doing it all our houses. Okay. I've been in that canyon a million times and it's probably only a slide that needs a little area. It's on spot. Okay, so thank you. The dam has been put down to the problem of the water coming down and hitting. Okay, we're going to yeah, direct that again to our Department of Natural Resources Division of Water Rights expert. To, I'm sure there's lots of laws and rules in place for building new dams. I, I, I can appreciate um, uh, the comment of why can't we just build a dam and hold the water there. Um, we may cause a greater concern, a greater issue if we did that, backing the water up and, and not having a fully designed dam. Uh, particularly as we're trying to draw this reservoir down and releasing that large flow into the river. So I, I do feel that we have made great progress today. I'm very, very encouraged with what I see on site. Um, and I, I can't say the, the situation or the emergency has been entirely averted, but we have, I'm very, very encouraged with what I see. And getting that reservoir drawn down, I think is key to taking the stress off of the dam and getting below the affected area. Uh, as I mentioned, we were able to, to relieve the ice pressure and we'll continue to stabilize that downstream slope um, until we can get this in a safe condition. The progress we've made at this point, it wouldn't make sense to divert attention downstream. I just say that it did happen. Yeah, I, I just, if it did breach, I don't think we would have time to get a dam in place to prevent that. So evacuation is, is the response. Um, plan C, step third, and we very new to the test plan. And I just had a question about Alan Henry's grant and the test plan. If there is a creek, what would happen to all the grant? It is 10 miles uh, out of town, about seven miles more than there. Okay, you know, one of, one of the things we try to be cautious of is, is speculation, and we, we don't want to, you know, say what if type of things. But as, as we've heard tonight, uh, the, the risk has greatly reduced as far as a, a breach of the dam. And, and if so, it still is just a, the upper two to five feet, right? It's not, we're not even talking about the whole dam. That's, that's, out, that's, not, that's out of the picture. So I think um, damages would be minimal. The flow, the water would be minimal. Ever, ever going to come up and, yeah. Wait, I was just going to, and, and uh, Dave, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I, I think I just got information that they've, they've brought a couple pictures um, of, of what, as we started and what we look like this afternoon. Do you have those, Dave? Is it, I just hope that will maybe alleviate concerns if you can see the progress that we've made. Again, that was they were making great progress. I left the site at 3.30 this afternoon. We're now at a quarter to seven. Uh, and we were two thirds of the way there. Um, so I will continue to make progress and, and stabilize this area of the dam. Okay, so if I can just describe what's going on here. Uh. This is some drone footage. So this was before we started work today. I'm not sure if this was taken yesterday. Um, I imagine it was because we, we weren't notified until Monday evening. But, but that's what we were dealing with at the Penguin Lake Dam. You can see the water's coming through that upper two to five feet of a, a vertical wall section of the dam. And Dave, do you have a picture today? Uh, so here is a picture I took standing on the dam this afternoon. One thing I didn't mention, but but we'll mention here. You can see the little orange square sitting on the dam that's fastened to the dam. That's we call that an inclinometer, and it measures angles. So we were measuring the tilt of the wall as this progressed. On uh, yesterday afternoon, the wall was tilted eight degrees towards the downstream. 
Again, today we were able to continue lowering the reservoir. We, we cut the ice and took that pressure off. I don't know that you can see that, but you can see that in the photo. To the right of the photo, you can see clear water against the dam. That ice was pressed against it. So, so that ice has moved away from the dam, relieving that pressure. And then you can hopefully see the, the piece of equipment, the excavator placing that stabilizing material. This is a rock material that allows the water through it but provides a stabilizing effect on the downstream side of the wall. With all of those things done, that, that inclinometer, we've, we've gone from eight degrees till the downstream to now two degrees till the downstream. So the wall has rotated back towards the reservoir. And we see that as a positive sign that what we're doing is stabilizing the dam. My question is, how much were you able to draw down the dam, like the water lake today? Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yes, I do feel like maybe I should just bring my chair over. <laughs> but just think of it this way. You're really helping me get my step count up today. Uh, so we have continued to lower the reservoir. Uh, this reservoir does hold a lot of water. Uh, we've come down just over two inches since beginning releases. I know that doesn't sound like a lot. Um, and I hate to say, take my word for it. I, I'm just going to tell you that has been beneficial in reducing pressure on the dam as we've re lowered that reservoir level. So I know it doesn't sound like a lot of water. Um, and again, we'll continue to release until we get down below this affected area, but it really has been beneficial to take pressure off of the dam. Okay. Yes. <laughs> sure. <clears throat> so the question is, the top part of this dam was built years later, and yes, that is correct. So it... <clears throat> It is not only that upper portion, but it's also down into the masonry concrete that sits below this as well. Yeah, yeah. so there was an original mas concrete masonry dam that they placed a concrete cap on. And, and you can see Honestly, I don't know if you can see it in these pictures. If, if you had a really good, clear image, you can see the different colors. So it's very easy to distinguish those two concrete placements. But <clears throat> this is not just affecting that, that upper cap. It, it is coming down a little lower from, from what we can tell. Um, recognize we're here to stabilize it. There's a lot of water coming through. And we really can't do a, a complete assessment of the, the cause and the damage. Uh, David Dodds, Public Works Director for Garfield County. I just wanted to give you guys a, a quick update. Um, my road crew foreman, uh, Clint Moore, he just gave me a call and just to let you guys know how quickly they are working and, and um, how good a job they're doing. Uh, since this photo was taken a, a few hours ago, um, he just called me just recently and let me know that uh, they have uh, pretty well completed their work across the, the face of that dam. Um, and so it's uh, most, the majority of the way across and about uh, 12 feet thick. And so, you know, in his opinion, he, he's feeling a lot more comfortable about where it is today. Um, they made a lot of progress even since these photos are taken. And so just wanted to give you that update to but you know, even now, um, we're in a better position than we were just a few hours ago. I'm, I'm just going to tag on to that, Dave. Thank you for that update. We're not going to stop at the affected area. We're going to continue past it um, 10 to 12 feet so that we're just, just we want to be very cautious and we want to stabilize this correctly. So we are going to proceed past that uh, affected area. Okay, thank you. We do realize there are a few questions on the, uh, our Zoom audience as well. We're, we're working on getting those questions for those uh, watching on Zoom. Um, other questions here in the room? Where is the 
Yes, 1870-something. Yes. That's the additions that uh, Everett was talking about, yes. And, and other improvements be besides raising it, have there been other improvements? I really am a steps guy. I'll just stay here. Um, so the original dam, uh, for my, by my records, 1872 was the original dam construction. The dam was modified in 1942. And then the last, uh, um, we had a, a gate issue in 2011 that was repaired in, in the fall of 2011 and into the, the winter of 2012. I saw a hand. I think I saw a hand up in the upper. Oh, right there. Go ahead, sir. You just have to talk loud, please. Thank you. Yeah, Alan will come up in our uh, West Penguich Irrigation Company. Alan, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about your gardens. It's going to freeze to July 1st anyway. Um, we, the water, uh, we're putting the water in the canals uh, now. Uh, the water in the secondary, sea, the, unless we lose uh, some some things up the canyon that make it so we can't get the water in the system. Uh, we will, uh, uh, when the city is able to put it in their system, they will. Uh, the we probably won't put water into the um, um, into the farmers pipelines until you know first of May or so. Uh, but we we feel like that uh, even though we're going to draw the lake down significantly. Uh, with the water coming in, we think that there will ha we'll still have an excellent water year. And we'll be able to have plenty of water if we can have the weather good. I, I just wanted to make one other thing. As far as the dam repair, the uh, back in 1974, there was a, a major uh, reconstruction of the dam on the back side. And, uh, and, and the dam, the, the old dam that was built in the 1800s is now... Uh, 30, 40 foot thick on the bottom and then pulls up. So there have been other items, other issues with that dam that we've, that have been repaired over the years, so. Okay, thank you, Alan. Are we able to get any of those off the Zoom? Yes. And that, okay. And that may be a question. Uh, it's, somebody asked, is it charged with maintenance while well, We have a water boss who um, who we hire each year that is up to the dam regularly. We also have an inspection from the um, uh, Forest Service and the state dam uh, safety people each year. And uh, our our dam has been has been safe. There's always a few little things like willows growing up and 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 you know a few little things, but. Uh, I looked at the dam uh, last year. The water was going over the dam. They weren't able to do a complete inspection, but there was no indication there was any problem. The problem this one this year is we we pulled the water in the lake way down in the fall, but the, but because of the good year we had a year ago, that con lake continued to fill this year. And then we had the perfect storm with the uh, with the winds last week that blew that ice up under that cap. And that's what caused the initial this problem that we've got today. Uh, that that portion has been there 80 years without any uh, indication of any problems, and so we we still feel like we can fix that, and we'll we'll be fine.
We don't, right now, I don't think anybody knows for sure, but this, this, this concern is on the top three, two, three to five feet. And so we don't see any reason at this point uh, to, to drain the lake. And uh, if we did, then we would be doing looking at the coffer things like we've done in the past. But, but uh, I don't think that's gonna be required to, to drain the lake. I think the work can be done on that upper two to five feet uh, without draining any more than the lake, other than where we're working. All right, thank you. I, we have time for one more question. I think we're gonna take it from the Zoom group as well. So it's two to three hours for the water to reach town. And the other question was how will we be alerted? Okay, we're gonna go through first with sirens and let you know that we need to start evacuating. Then we're gonna, as everybody's moving out, we're gonna follow up from the far west side of town and start knocking on doors. We're gonna make sure everybody's out of their home the best we can. and. Uh, then there's the alert sense system, which we talked about earlier. Uh, please sign up for that. It, I think that'll be the best way for us to reach out to you. So, and we'll need you to enter your cell phone number on that. And that is on the... Yeah, then we may be able to reach you by cell phone as well. Like the updates you get from You've ever got one of the COVID updates or whatever. So we'll reach out that way as well. It's on the website on Garfield County Sheriff's Office website. Well, we're not gonna force you out of your home, but it's a pretty good idea. They should go, and I guess it should be mandatory, but we have a hard time just throwing you out of your house. So please evacuate if it comes to that. And, and, and uh, let me conclude here by saying you know, we're, very, we're very optimistic about uh, the events today and the, the future. Again, the, the evacuation notice is purely precautionary. We just wanna make sure that you have enough warning in enough time should that need arise. Um, you know, emergency preparedness, whether it's be for flood, wildfire, tornado, it doesn't matter. It's, it's, a, it's a mindset, it's a lifestyle. We all need to be thinking about preparedness for any of these types of different threats and hazards that, that may face us. You know, and with that, I wanna just kind of, again, put out a plug there for beready.utah.gov for all things emergency preparedness. Also a reminder, we have preparedness brochures on this table over here that you can take, as well as copies of the maps and the evacuation plan that we talked about and showed you. You can get those on the table over there. Um, again, uh, as uh, Dave Dodds, our public works for uh, Garfield County, wanted to express thanks to Cent South Central and Garfield County Road crew for the work that they're doing at the dam. I wanna thank all of our presenters and our other subject matter experts for being here tonight putting all this information together and, and, and giving this to you to use for your benefit, along with all the other hard work that they've been doing all day today and will continue to do until this uh, issue is uh, alleviated. And um, we talked about the, the threat being avoiding fast moving water, rivers and streams. I just wanna remind you the protective action for that. Turnarounds don't drown. You know, that's how we avoid, you know, uh, injury and death in fast moving water. Just six inches of fast moving water can knock a person off their feet. 12 inches of fast moving water can float a car. So remember, turn around, don't drown. Um, with that, thank you all for being here this evening. We really appreciate your support and uh, your continued support throughout the rest of this uh, situation. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Thank you.
it to you, and I'll take something. I don't think we had it. Like, we never reached a hundred or anything like that, right? Well, well, you know.